Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be talking about Area 51, the Helix Project, issue number two. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And before we get started, if you're new and like sports channel, you can do so by hitting that like button, clicking that subscribe button, and share it. And with that, hell yeah, we are now on the second issue of this six issue miniseries. Written by Trevor Fernandez Lenkovich, with art by Marcelo Salaza, colors by Marcio Ferrer, and letters by Taylor Esposito. And this book begins with Kent meeting up with the person that sent him the letter, who turns out to be the little girl who was also present during his father's supposed death, her name being Marissa. After a brief introduction and snapping his ankle back in place, the book takes us to a government facility where we see a bunch of mutated dead people and a man in a black suit disappointed with the results of the experiment. Dr. Eldridge tries to explain the complexity of the issue before having his own neck snapped. We return to Kent and Marissa who ends up taking him to a man tied up in a chair. To be more precise, the same man who shot Kent's father. Marissa hands him a gun, urging Kent to kill the man before he explains himself, and Kent urges him to tell him everything he knows. The man revisits that night and explains about the mysterious men that came for both the body of Kent's father and the little girl. Upon hearing everything, Kent decides living with the guilt is worse punishment than death for the once officer. But Marissa disagrees and shoots him in the head. And what we have here is yet another stellar installment. And I admit, I had my suspicions that the person in the hood was the little girl from the flashback. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't mean to pat myself on the back for figuring that out, but, you know. But while I did see that kind of coming, I did not see the officer in the chair coming. And in fact, it just deepens the story even more because now I noticed certain details, like when the government people came to get Ken's body, they also took Marissa. And now I gotta wonder, what exactly did they do to her? Especially since she seems to know pretty much everything there is to know about Kent and his abilities. And from what we get with her in this book, it seems pretty clear that she's not only traumatized by what happened as a child, but also potentially traumatized by what happened to her after. Which even makes me think that the entire event as a whole had a bigger impact on her than it did on Kent. Because with Kent, he still has humanity, he's got empathy, but with Marissa, she seems to be completely devoid of any of that. And once again, we have some nod to some potential tales of inspiration, like with the first issue, there were some panels that were very much Watchmen-like. And here in issue number two, we've got things like, for example, Dr. Eldridge. And this name comes from the term Eldridge Horror, which is a subgenre of horror created by H.P. Lovecraft, basically all of the cosmic horror or the eldritch terrors like Cthulhu. It's also a word that means weird, sinister, or ghostly, much like the size of Marissa's heads and the shot of Kent's gums. And it's a really nifty tabletop board game. Suffice to say, I'm kind of expecting a large tentacle monster somewhere in the near future. Huh? Yeah? Giant tentacle monster? Watch him again? Or I'm just looking too, too hard into it. And one thing out the gate that I really like about the art is the dichotomy between these first two issues with some repeating imagery. I think it's something really minor, but also really interesting that helps drive the narrative forward. The colors in this book have also been a bit of a personal favorite of mine because I've always been a fan of that sort of like watercolor or paint aesthetic type of coloring. To me, it just makes the color a bit more vibrant and helps with that pop. And this is also the first time we get to see Kent in his alien form with his three fingers and head protrusions. And if you think he looks ugly, keep in mind, he still got it better than that line of Deadpools from X-Men Origin Wolverine. Especially about the part of, you know, being alive. Overall, Area 51 has, for me, been the full package in terms of storytelling, art, and originality in a way that companies like the big two just aren't doing. And if you like what you heard about this book and you want to support it in any way you can, the Kickstarter for issue number three is currently up. You can get the first two issues digitally on Comixology, or you can buy the two physical copies on darknightnation.com. Links in the description down below. 
And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.